the way that we have actually kind of I know that everybody talks about woke but really woken up to to, to us yeah. um, what we can achieve yeah. um, it's, I, I think that's been the biggest highlight Blogging is something that you're passionate about, you might presume, yeah. If we were speaking just before you came on here, um, blogging is something that I recently dabbled in a little bit, you could say, but um, it was just an opportunity or a form of me to get work out there, you know. Um, how was it for yourself though? Like, was it just you had a passion for writing and then transitioned that into blogging, or was it um, I just see this as a, a, a vehicle to just get my content out? No, I think it, it was definitely a passion. I've always loved writing, um, creating poetry and bits and pieces, but never really put anything out there. Um, it wasn't until I got ill um, and was told by people that I have a knack for, for putting words down on paper and you know blog posts and, and things like that. Um, but I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. um, and also it was the start of my new journey, hence the name New Dawn, uh, because my life completely changed after having mm -hmm. cancer um, and it was a new me. So mm -hmm. I thought I could put my experiences down on paper to share with people and hopefully they can relate or, yeah. you know, just... Just, um, just to be you know, connected to yeah. people in a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's always been a passion of mine, mm -hmm. just, just words in general mm -hmm. and reading. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's where it started from and mm -hmm. has continued. Mm -hmm. But I know that not everybody likes to read, um, yeah. which is a shame, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's things that you need to do to kind of move forward and get your word out there. 100%. Um, Hence why well, I'm sitting here now. Talking yeah, hence where you come on after your podcast. That's what it's about. Like um, I've been saying to everyone who's come on here, it's an opportunity to just shine your light in a way. I don't want it to feel like um, it's an interview or we're digging into each other. I wanted to just genuinely, what makes you passionate comes forward. Um, and the more we do that, the more we document our stories, I think um, the more comfortable we'll feel just having open conversations uh, reaching out to new people and things like that, you know, so firstly, let's go back a little bit because I always like to give a little bit of history just for, to give some um, bit of background. So what was you doing before the lockdown and before, um, let's say, your illness? Before my illness, I was your average working mum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was working at a school, um, being an LSA. I've done various other jobs before that but um, yeah just just your average normal mom. everyday mum um, working raising the kids yeah. um, then I got ill mm -hmm. and that changed a lot of things um, naturally as yeah, it would do yeah, yeah. Uh, also at the same time my mum got ill mm -hmm and um, she was diagnosed with vascular dementia. So along with dealing with my illness, I was kind of dealing with her as well. Yeah. And the different isms and schisms and issues that dealing with an elderly parent brings. Yeah. Um, again, alongside my own hospital appointments and chemotherapy yeah. and everything. So it, it was just a, a kind of tough time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I was, I was active before that, as I said, I used to do exercise classes, dance classes, you know, I could party, I could wear heels, yeah, I was, you know, do I was yeah. doing my thing, yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, and just enjoying my life. I've, yeah. I've never been a person who is into, like, designers or, mm -hmm. or living the high life, I'm, I'm quite, quite humble. yeah, and just, just quite like real, and yeah. so, um, it wasn't it was hard in one sense mm -hmm. to to change mm -hmm. 
but not if you know what I mean. Um, as I said, because I wasn't living the high life or anything, it didn't really matter. You didn't, you didn't care, you didn't think about it like that. Yeah, it um, but it did have a big impact on how I lived my life. Yeah. Um, as I said, that now, now walk with a stick yeah. uh, because I have neuropathy, yeah. um, which is nerve damage. Okay. Um, so the things that I used to enjoy, I can't enjoy as much yeah. now. Um, but you know, I'm still here. I'm yeah, still alive. I, yeah, I just sure. needed to find a different way of doing my thing. Yeah. Hence, the new dawn, a new beginning. Uh-huh. Talk to me about that. Now that we've gotten onto that, that was actually one thing I was going to speak to you about. Where did the whole idea of the name New Dawn come come around from? It, as I said, literally, mm-hmm. because it was a new dawn mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. It. The, the old dawn had gone. I couldn't do the things that I used to do. Yeah. So it was, okay, this is where you're at now. Mm-hmm. Let's take it from there mm-hmm. and kind of share your experiences with other people so they can see yeah. that, you know, it can work. You can still survive afterwards, even though your life's changed. There's still things that you can do. Yeah. Um, I've always believed that you can bring something to the table. And there's so many different aspects to that. There's the people who build the table, who clean the table, Mm. who sit around the table and entertain you, who, you know, Mm. there's, everybody has something that they can bring. 100%, sorry to just cut you really quickly, but what I think is really unique about that is that I tend to look at things in a holistic way. Um, And I think it, it's a good way for most people to, 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 to look at things because it, it simplifies what you're actually looking at, but then it also shows you the areas in which you can get involved in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like when you mentioned about the table aspect of you need somebody to build the table, you need people to use the table, use you the need table, people to, it. yeah, clean it. There are so many different purposes in life, and I think we get stuck not really understanding what goes around it in our careers or our industries or our passions, you know, like, um, I'll give you a great example. For me, when I played football, for me, at the early ages, football was just about expression. It was just about doing, acting. Um, Whereas as you get older, you start to do more classroom things. You start to do more educational things about health, fitness, and it's completely different to just going out on the pitch and running around and playing you know it makes you focus differently so once I started to understand that I think that helped me in life a lot you know realizing that there are so many different vantage points to every situation and um, you know we can kind of work together to figure out what what other ones there are that exist Um, so yeah it's great for to sit down with somebody like yourself who understands that um, and is using it to your advantage, you know what I mean? I try. Yeah. <laughs> try anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I, I didn't go to uni, I didn't finish college mm-hmm. due to family yeah. incidences and, and things like that. But again, as I said, you don't necessarily have to do those things mm-hmm. to thrive and survive. Don't get me wrong, it's all good yeah. if that's the path that you choose to go down and that's what you want to do but you can still achieve without doing you know various different aspects being involved Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean for me now Mm -hmm. it's about trying to connect a bit more on a different level with people so that i mean i still love blogging i still love writing this year has been difficult um for a number of reasons which you know it has been for a lot of people but I know that I need to try and connect on a different level Um, so yeah which is why ideally I'd like to start my own podcast Mm. maybe discussing some of the blogs that I've already written um, just getting different people's opinions on them Mm -hmm. and you know just just trying to help people with, you know, just through my experiences. Um, 
and you know just getting other people's views and opinions and just and especially coming from the black side as well just just trying to connect a bit more yeah. and unify there's so many Within things your history the culture right this is it um yeah. so many different aspects mm -hmm. to being black mm -hmm. and that really and truly until the past couple of years we never really kind of discussed mm -hmm. and connected uh, for example this year there's been a lot more on mental health yes. and things like that that I've seen throughout the black community that was never discussed you know when I was younger it, it's just you, never talk about them, you so didn't so. talk about it and there's a lot of subjects that you don't talk about you just you don't talk the business yeah, exactly. when you're you know subject. you just yeah. don't do it yeah. Um, again, which is why I like to blog because I like to keep it real mm -hmm. as well. So I would just discuss anything. I'd, I'd put it down there and just put it out there yeah. because a lot of the subjects weren't broached when I was younger, yes, and I didn't want my daughters to well, kind of that uncomfortability. Right. So things. from the start, I've always been honest and open with them. We've been able mm -hmm. to discuss anything yeah. and everything. So you talked about the blogging element and how you first went. So since COVID has kind of licked down the whole planet and everyone's just all over the place, um, what has been your primary focus then? Has it been still the blogging or did we, have you tried transitioning in different spaces? No, <laughs> uh, it has still been the blogging. I, um, as I said, it has been a difficult year yeah. personally, mm -hmm. um, which has affected my writing yeah. um, I haven't put out as many blogs as I would have Usually. liked to um, but I'm hoping to change that uh, and also speaking to uh, my peers and uh, just just my girls and a few other people and getting their thoughts and opinions of which way mm -hmm. I should go now um, I know that we're in the digital age visual age everybody likes to see things mm -hmm. and you know see people and i really don't like putting my face out there but i know that that is the next step mm -hmm. so for me um ideally i would like to create podcasts mm -hmm. discussing the blogs that i've done because i've you know written like 80 odd blogs mm -hmm. so there's i i have so different could, subjects there that, that could, could be break, discussed yeah, yeah you don't have to go past them you can go back and revisit them Right, this yeah. is it, and could yeah. be break, broken down. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of good feedback from the blogs that I have written. But as I said, I know that good. not everybody likes to read them, and yeah. I'm, I'm sure that I could pick up more interest if I did put my face out there. I so, um, yeah, so that's the next step for me, is to kind of try and communicate on another level. Yeah. Um, use and, use yeah. the technology to your advantage. That's it, what I kind of say. I am a slight technophobe though, I yeah. fully admit. So I, I need to kind of get my people in to help me. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. See, that's another thing as well. Like, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'd like to make a quick note on that. In the black community, I find um, our parents' generation, technology has come and just missed them yeah. a little bit. And I think it's a case of not understanding or being knowledgeable. I think they're very knowledgeable. I think it's just. We grew up with it. We grew up using phones, technology, to the point where it's seamless now. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's second nature. Yeah. So if you haven't had that, these are now the things that people are getting their content out with, podcasting, YouTube, and um, even audio podcasts and things like that as well, too. But photography, video, all those different things. I think if we can come together more on cases like this, I spoke to loads of different people, because it seems as if your generation has the wisdom and the guidance and the knowledge, but our generation has the technological skill. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way that, but that's how, we, yeah, we're working together and bridging those gaps. Um, you can get more technology, but more education behind it too. So we can make it enjoyable, we can still make it fun. But I think the, the key is as well, and it's not, it's not forgetting that there's a purpose behind everything we do, you know? Absolutely. You start you start operating purposeless, or you start not having a purpose to what you do. Yeah. It's not gonna, you're not gonna find that fulfillment, you know, things wear down quickly. So, 
let's talk a little bit specifically about you know you talked about the culture and the history of like the black experience and how difficult it can be in general so what has been throughout this lockdown period one of the most highlight highlighting things that have just been like wow for you um it could be anything in terms of health it could be the community it can be just noticing something that stands out that maybe you didn't notice before i think for me it's probably the way that the black community has come together mm -hmm. um in regards to businesses supporting each other i've definitely seen an increase mm -hmm this past year and it's, it's amazing um, because before you had to kind of search far and wide to, to find a black photographer or someone who's you know selling black art or whatever else food, food anything yeah. but now the, the black business pages have mm. kind of come together mm. there's um, an app that I was introduced to recently which I can't remember the name of but oh, it's got black the pound list day. of right black pounder it's, it's just the way that we have actually kind of I know that everybody talks about woke but really woken up to yeah. to, to us yeah. and what we can achieve yeah. um, it's, I, I think that's been the biggest highlight of black, this black year the black and yeah most definitely yeah um, yeah yeah it's been swift hasn't it like i've even because coming from a black history background from the family and just culturally um i've always been kind of tuned into wagon in terms of the where my people come from yeah. but it doesn't um necessarily spread or hasn't necessarily spread in the past so um you might have to search through another three four or five black people back in like 15 20 years ago who are culturally awake yeah. like who are aware of what's going on whereas now you know one in two black people will be aware and knowledgeable yeah. Yeah. and that's why i think we need to be careful not to let things fall into stigma like the term woke i don't even like that like the not not i don't like the term i don't like the way that people use the term yeah. like it's just like oh you're woke and it's kind of like Waking up from years of mental damage, psychological warfare, and stress, depression, anxiety, and now being able to recognize the signs, I think that that's an amazing thing. I think that should be praised, being able to be awake to the signs. Yeah. So if anyone out there is like, feels like they are woke or they know people around them that are waking up, you know, see it as a good thing. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, and as I said, with all these black businesses and, mm. and enterprises coming together, mm -hmm. we're kind of standing out a bit more, yeah. um, which I love. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's only, it's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. It can only get better. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, 100%, it has to, it has to, because we're heading, I, mean, I like to think we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, we just need to keep the momentum mm -hmm. going though. Um, he said, I don't need it to be phased out or fizzled out yeah. and just, yeah, and watered down. It's, no. No, we need to kind of keep it going, keep pushing. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a case of making the information bite-sized but consistent. Yeah, yeah. You know, like not trying to overwhelm people with the craziest of thoughts or ideas. I think give them, give them something small and give it to them consistently. I think that's the way better, it's more sustainable. Yeah. Um, you can monitor it. And things like that so and, and keep them interested yeah yeah, because, yeah. yeah. you give like, them too much they just kind of lose focus and just like yeah okay mm -hmm. and it's kind of like you said as well about the writing like with the blogging it's not that i'm sure you don't want to use that platform to blog it's just recognizing where the market moves and now more eyes and visibility are on youtube and podcasting and that sort of thing so if you can get yourself on those platforms if you can collaborate with people who do it um then it just creates more visibility for what you're trying to build as well, right? So, yeah, that must be, a, that's definitely amazing to hear. So let's talk about the Slough community because I know that you've worked with, you've mentioned a few people. I mean, yeah. big shout out to some, Tina and Becca yeah. and yes. um, Slough yeah, Music Michelle. Service, the Slough Caribbean Tanya. Forum. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, um, there's a lot of, 
amazing talent out there. Um, thankfully, uh, I'm blessed to know quite a few of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this year again mm -hmm. has definitely been um, uh, uh, has highlighted mm -hmm. the talent that we do have in Slough. Mm -hmm. um, I actually saw you on Tina's video. Um, oh, in the, the high street, on the high street yeah. with Calvin, yeah, shout out yeah, Calvin. Yeah, the artwork, well, Calvin, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant pieces of work. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's nice to see. Um, Collaborations between the ages. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. working together and mm -hmm. just, and, and doing our thing. Yeah, they, we need more of that. I mean, I spoke, I speak a lot with Christina and, and Biggs and that as well, like about what Slough needs and what Slough has lacked for a long time. And I think it's um, a clear and concise voice that these are our terms and conditions, not in a case of like get on board or go away, but more in a case of no, we, are, we, we understand the system. We understand how to market, how to brand, but we need, just like everybody, a helping hand at certain points. Nobody gets somewhere without help. Um, and I think in the, in the black community, we're all dotted. Everyone's kind of got their passion and they're putting time into their passions, which is great. But eventually, we're gonna have to get to a point where we come get together. Because yeah. it, will, it will never last generations if we don't come together. It will last for your time period. And then people will remember what you did and there's just like, yeah, that was nice, but. Do you know what, it, yeah. Um, I totally hear you because I just think back to when I was younger just the the amount of different things there were to do just for for black people alone you know we had the Orchard Youth Club there was Saturday schools there was so many different things that we were doing and creating and going on this trip and that trip and all of that seems to have kind of disappeared now and I think we need to try and kind of pull some of that back um, and it's, it, you know, it's doable. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I would have loved for my daughters to have done half the things that I did when I was, when they were my age. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we can work on that and, and get together and... I'm glad you brought up Saturday School as well, because that was a very pivotal part of my black experience as a young person, particularly in Slough because it's kind of like I already had the aunties and uncles and parents and who are already knowledgeable on those things. So it's kind of like you were adopted into it. Yeah. And then, you know, whether or not you chose to take it seriously was dependent upon how you was going to move forward in life, you know. So I took that so seriously, like those Saturday schools, because I just used to remember what it was like at the school, normal school, not fitting in, being ostracised, being the one of only, the first of... You know what I mean? And then, yeah, the first in this and the first black person, da, 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 all of that stuff. And like, when I was at Saturday school, it was nice because you're just around your people. You're around your people and it's, um, I think you can, you can grow and learn differently yeah. when you're around people that just have the same biology, same, same makeup as you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that was a very formative time for me. Like, I know you mentioned it. What perspective did you get of Saturday School? Or what stage did you see it at? For me, it's pretty much the same as you. Mm. I was one of two black girls in my year mm. at school. Mm. So to actually go to a place where the, the whole classroom was full of people who looked like me, who understood our culture and like you said, our heritage, um, it was just, it was, it was just a, a nice, Special yeah, experience, mm. and to learn about our history, because you know you don't get that in school. You get his story, his story, not our story. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a, a, a eye opening. Yeah, 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 very much so. That's how I found it for myself as well. Time is our most valuable asset. I say that a lot, you know, like people come and share their time with me or give me a piece of their time to do something. You know, I have to thank that.
ultimately that's worth more than money you know what I mean it's worth more than thank you hopefully every every time you come on here you see somebody new that you ain't seen or if you see somebody you've seen before you learn a little bit more about them before we leave the lovely people um, where can people find your writings your blog your information um, okay. I'll get the links and put them up but you can let them know uh, I have a Facebook page. It's called New Dawn, New Day. That's N-U-D-A-W-N-N-U-D-A-Y. Um, and my blogging page is New Dawn Diary, WordPress.com. Mm. So um, that's where you can find me for now. But watch this space, and hopefully you'll be seeing me in a few other places as well. Again, please go check out the wonderful New Dawn's work. And uh, stay tuned, we've got a hell of a lot more coming for you. Peace and love, see you soon. <laughs>